Hi there. Learn Quranic Arabic has responded to my response and has tried to clarify a couple of points. I'm going to answer his renewed claims regarding the inheritance in the Quran. I appreciate that this time the response is addressing a particular video and gives some, but still not all, details about it. The first point he addresses is that I found that the Arabic word walad has been interpreted by almost all distinguished Muslim scholars as meaning children. Learned Quranic Arabic explains that I am right and wrong. Actually, you're right and you're wrong at the same time. How, how I can be wrong that scholars hold this opinion is unclear to me, but I'll let it slide. The explanation that learned Quranic Arabic gives is that it should be a singular which would not fit here and proposes a compromise, one or more. Now this is reasonable and acceptable. I accept that the wording is not clear and requires interpretation of scholars. But what learned Quranic Arabic has quietly done is toned down his hard translation error and mistranslation into a not quite right fit, which I see as something completely different. That's a, just a translation error. And I think the person's used a mistranslation. But I will not split hairs here, so let's leave it. Now comes a very true statement. It is not relevant. My question to learn Quranic Arabic then obviously is, why bring it up in the first place? But at least we're making progress here. Now let's turn to the actual mechanics of these verses. I have created an example for an estate which consists of several daughters, a wife and both parents of the deceased. I now understand what learned Quranic Arabic meant with the accusation that the maker of the original video, well me, mixed sentences. I can now deduce that he was responding to my original video. Well, he now rambles a bit, spoiling the factual argumentation with a personal comment that it is impossible for the Quran to be wrong. It's impossible for the Quran to be wrong. Introducing your following arguments with a statement like this leaves the viewer with a suspicion that there will be some sort of magic required to make the statement come true, regardless of the facts. Pity. And the magic trick follows shortly afterwards. Learn Quranic Arabic states that you can only use one of the sentences from the three inheritance ayat at a time. So daughters get two thirds. However, parents and wives are not mentioned in this condition. So what this person has done, as I said, he's brought the next part for one's parents to each one of them is a sixth of his estate if he left children. A, third, a sixth, a sixth, which is one third. And he's put that one third with, if he left children, say he left three daughters, and then he's gone to Zapia, which speaks about three daughters. The problem with this actually, in the first condition, in red, it doesn't mention anything about the parents or the wife. In the second condition, in blue, it doesn't mention anything about what the children get. It just says if you left children or a child. So what this person has done is he's put them together. And that's my point. You just can't do that. You can't apply them to a situation collectively, but only one at a time. So then, if a man dies leaving two daughters and his wife, why don't we apply the following sentence which regulates what the parents get and ignore the second part of the sentence? In 4.11 it clearly says, To the male the like of the portion of two females, and if they be women above two, then for them two-thirds of what he leaves. Are these two sentences or three? Are these two or three totally separate cases? What if I leave behind three daughters and one son? Does the son get double of what the females get, which would be double of the two-thirds? Or would the daughters get two-thirds and the son nothing? Which would not be double, as specified in the first part. How do you pick which part of which verse is applicable? Don't you see this is a total mess? Don't you see this is clearly not the work of an all-knowing and wise God? You could do a better job of this. Okay, so now we come to the second part of the video. In a reply to my and or video, learned Quranic Arabic pointed out that orphans inherited and in the second video said the orphans did not inherit. In a try to rescue the situation, learned Quranic Arabic now comes up with quotes from books where I'm unable to verify his sources and only found some far-fetched quote collections on Islamic sites. 
Looking at the quotes, however, it is immediately apparent that we are talking about tribal customs, not inheritance laws. What is funny and actually quite comical is that learned Quranic Arabic abandons his initial claim that the female orphans did not inherit anything. The second example is just as irrelevant. An act in the UK saying that women can legally keep what they earn and inherit property in no way proves that prior to this act, women were not allowed to keep what they earned or inherited, nor does it specify what the situation was in the region of the Arabian Peninsula, which is what my quotes addressed. The third point regards the allocation of twice the amount to a male as compared to a female. Learned Quranic Arabic points out that in 4.11 it says that the parents, father and mother, both receive equal amounts, namely a sixth. Now, in theory, I would tend to agree. But, <laughs> this is a but, why does it say the opposite in 1176? The male shall receive the portion of two females. Full stop. When can I ignore which portion of what verse? Or am I mixing verses again? When in doubt, with anything in the Quranic text, where do we go first? Right, the tafsir. Ibn Kathir mentions three different cases. In case one, an additional sixth is given to the father. In case 2a, the father gets twice. In 2b, Allah has given the mother one half of what the father gets. Whoops. The reasoning behind this is the same as what learned Quranic Arabic always points out and which I have shown to be painfully wrong. Lastly, looking at the Hadith, we get the same picture. The male gets double of the female without exceptions. But let's look at the practical implications of this. If I were to enter the IRTH and inheritance website, what will happen? Do you want to hazard a guess whether scholars follow your argumentation? Um, nope, sorry, they don't. Well, I'm really sorry, but none of my questions or points were adequately addressed. The claims were merely repeated.